Training Hunter in RuneScape is easy. You set a trap, wait for a catch, and grab your XP. But what do you do if you don't have access to any traps? My account is a region locked account called an Extreme One Chunk Iron Man. We started off here, but now I have access to all of this. However, in all of these game chunks, there is no access to any traps. I do have access to some hunter creatures, swamp lizards and black salamanders, but no small fishing net, so net trapping is off the cards. Despite the limitation of having no traps, I do have access to one training method, Euro Puro. Catching implings within Puro is an insanely slow training method and lands me with a requirement of 89 hunter to catch a lucky impling, a grind that will take hundreds of hours. In the last video, I discovered how to abuse a bugged NPC to massively increase XP per hour within Puro Puro. This was a huge find, however, it was limited to area locked accounts with access to Puro Puro and only worked for an hour or two per week. In this video, I'll be going on a journey of exploration and exploitation to try and discover the impossible. A way to train my hunter within these 53 chunks that isn't catching implings, and what I found will change the game forever. I can't go to better hunter methods, but maybe I can bring them to me. So I have just rolled Pura Puro on my extreme one chunk iron man which means i need to get 89 hunter and that would be extremely less frustrating if i could use this spot over here the black salamanders now i obviously have this spot on the chunk map but what i don't have is a small fishing net and there's basically no way for me to get one there is one in berg de rot down here but obviously that's out of the chunks and i can't get into berg de rot so that one is off the cards but one that i think i may be able to get is this one here so this red dot here is a small fishing net now i reckon if i can just quickly turn off the region locker run north on this account and telegrab it but log out before the item gets to me then i reckon i'll be able to pull it south um hopefully that will work out for me now there is the chaos fanatic there which is not ideal not chaos fanatic crazy archaeologist uh but if i telegrab this i reckon i'll be able to log out very quickly before it gets to me so what the fuck useful for catching small fish what why can't i telegrab that can i pick it up <gasps> the fact I didn't... Wow, so that's not actually an item, is it? Oh my god, that's so weird. That is so... Is that a red dot on the map? No. Oh my god, that is bizarre. So there is a small fishing net here, but it's not an item. It's like a spawn of them. Because look, you can pick up as many as you like. That's so bizarre. Yeah, I won't be able to telegraph that then. Oh, no, that plans out the window. So I'm guessing I'll be able to telegraph this one. See, so that's kind of how I was planning on doing it. Oh, that's so lame. Because obviously once I picked it up, it will just count as my item. I was thinking I'd be able to pull it without it ever hitting my invent. But that's very lame. Either they thought of exactly this scenario. You know, the whole extreme one chunk needing a small fishing net. Or there's something going on here. There absolutely is something going on here. In November of 2014, Jagex made it impossible for Iron Man accounts to pick up small fishing nets from the ground at all. In a response to a now deleted tweet, Modash said this was to prevent an exploit, well, whatever that means. Uh, if you have any details on that, please leave a comment because it'd be cool to find out. 
In December of 2018, Jagex enabled Irons to use the small fishing net spawns in Lumbridge and the West Wilderness Ruins again. However, this was done by converting the spawn into a scenery item instead of the item spawn that it was before. What this means for me, however, is that there is no possibility of moving a small fishing net via telekinetic grab, either directly or indirectly. So, I gave up on trying to get a small fishing net. From an item spawn, there is one NPC that drops a small fishing net as a monster drop, Forgotten Souls. This NPC is literally the only way to obtain a small fishing net as a drop, and handily for me, it is located on the Isle of Souls, a location that I do actually have access to on my chunk map, and the drop rate is only a 1 in 16. So an absolute giga brain on stream made me realize that these NPCs here, the Forgotten Souls, are the only NPCs to drop the small fishing net as an item, which is pretty cool. Uh, and they are located on the Isle of Souls, which is obviously a location that we do have access to. However, <laughs> we only have access to this much of it <laughs> so we are very drastically out of the chunks that we can do and if we are going to be able to get a small fishing net drop from one of these isles of souls we're going to have to move an uh, a forgotten soul all the way from over here in the crumbling tower round and down and down and down and round and down and down and over to here where i would be able to kill it and when i kill it i've got a one in 16 shot at a small fishing net now i don't think that's going to be possible so we'll give it a go because and we'll see how far okay really not very far so it looks like we can get it to about here by the looks of it and then maybe we can push it out from here and hope hmm hmm Okay, let me gather some people and see if uh, <laughs> see if this is possible. Because obviously Hanani did move a dark wizard from the uh, from uh, you know the dark wizard place up to the Grand Exchange, so it is possible to move these NPCs a long way. But this might just be a bridge too far. Short answer: It was a bridge too far. This couldn't work. As a group, we did manage to get a forgotten soul to the end of the bridge. But from there, it was just way too tricky and would take far too long to ever be worth it. A small fishing net was impossible in this chunk. And if I wanted to avoid Piero, I'd have to think further out of the box. But I couldn't think of anything. So I gave up and decided to just lock in on Piero Piero and grind out the level. And I did. In the last episode, you saw me hit 83 Hunter without having used anything other than Puro. I'd resolved with myself that Puro was the only way. That was until two weeks ago. Now, figuring out this conundrum may be tricky, but what isn't tricky is deciding to use this channel's new long-term partner, Apex Gaming, when next upgrading your setup. Apex have a wide range of pre-built PCs that are all priced extremely reasonably and really look stunning. Take this one, the Apex Streamer, a Ryzen 7 5700X, 32GB of RAM and an RTX 4060 all for less than $1700. As well as the specs being exceptional, Apex are flexible too. You can finance all of their PCs at 0% APR so that you don't need to pay the whole price up front. Also, don't forget to use my 10% discount code FREY when purchasing an Apex gaming PC. Link in the description. Occasionally, I have a flick through older updates on the Old School Runescape website to see if there's anything that I've overlooked that may be useful for the account and on this day, for the first time since forestry hunting to get to level 27 for a silver bar, I thought I might have found something on an archived post from May 2024, just four months ago. Da -da 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 -da, minigame tweaks, scaling adjustments, project rebalance, skilling, mining gloves, volcano, 
Uh, mini game improvements, various skilling actions in trouble brewing. Yeah, that's a mostly harmless. Do, 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 do. Capturing a monkey awards 15 agility and 15 hunter XP. No fucking way. Trouble Brewing is a minigame located on Mostly Harmless. One thing you may already be thinking is, hold on, Mostly Harmless is outside of your 53 available chunks, and you would be absolutely correct. We'll be revisiting that one later. For now, let's focus on the minigame and the update. Trouble Brewing is notorious for two things, being useless dead content and being extremely buggy. The latter is definitely still true, with a bug pertaining to multiplication of rewards being patched just last week as you're watching this. However, the former, it being dead content, they've tried to fix, and this is what the archived update blog that I saw was trying to address. In an attempt to make Trouble Brewing slightly less excruciating, Jagex added a bunch of XP rewards to a ton of different actions within Trouble Brewing. However, there was one that stuck out to me. 15 agility and hunter XP for each monkey that is caught. Until May, this monkey has always given 0 XP. Okay, let's see if we can grab one of these monkeys. So, yes. Okay, right. So you can just catch them as easy as that. And it gives 15 agility and 15 hunter XP. Now, let's see what happens if we get rid of it. Yeah, okay, right. It just runs away and, and, and despawns. Right, okay. Interesting. Interesting. Now, that wasn't too exciting, contrary to what I just said. However, there was one detail that you may not have picked up on that stood out to me. The monkey that you catch goes straight to your inventory. That little bag of 28 items that you can take anywhere in the game at all. So, here's the plan. I cannot take my one chunk account to Mostly Harmless to catch this monkey. However, Maybe I can bring the monkey to my chunk account. I have it in my inventory. Surely I can just teleport away and take the monkey with me. Alas, no. There are two main obstacles that we need to overcome. Trouble Brewing wipes your inventory when you leave. Any items that you gather within the minigame are deleted as soon as you leave via any method, whether that's the portal, teleporting, or the game ending. And number two... The monkey isn't recatchable. When I drop it, I was expecting it to respawn as catchable, as there's no indication it would do anything other than this. So even if I could get it out, it would be useless to me. Let's tackle number one first. Getting the monkey out. Okay, we've got a monkey in our invent. Can we teleport out with it? No, right, we cannot teleport out. The only way to get out is via the portals in the corners. Right, okay. Okay, let's see what happens if I just try and leave. Yeah, just wipes the monkey completely. Right, we're going to have to try and find a way around that. At this point, I noticed something. Did you notice it too? The Bruin Guide. At Trouble Brewing, you cannot take any items in with you, nor can you take any out. However, Every time I left the minigame, this book followed me out. Clearly this item did not follow the same behaviour of all the other trouble brewing items. Could I use this somehow? Okay, the Bruin Guide. Look what happens when I click on this. It brings up this very harsh interface. Now, this isn't in the chat box, and there's a big red X, which tells me that it's a very stuck-into-the-game interface. So, I reckon if I bring up this interface... As I'm leaving the portal, it should dump me outside without wiping the inventory. At least not until I've closed this interface. So let's just see if that works. So I believe there's two levels of uh, checking that you want to leave. Yes, I want to leave. And then so I'm just going to click yes and spam this brewing guide at the same time. Okay, right. We are in the interface and... I believe we're outside. The, yeah, we're outside. Okay, so the mini-map says that we're outside. And I was correct. The monkey is definitely still in the invent, which is interesting. So, 
Uh, right, what happens if I close out of this interface? Will it just be as simple as keeping the monkey? No, okay, right. So it kept all the graphics and just for like a kind of very split second, but it definitely wiped everything. Uh, I did keep the brewing guide, however, as suspected. Um, oh, maybe, I, maybe I need to wait for a game update or something like that, like sit in that interface when the game updates. Maybe that'll work. So we're making progress, but at this point, I think it's worth revisiting point number two. How am I going to stop the monkey from converting into a level one uncatchable monkey? Well, the fact that it remains but changes kind of baffled me. I've never seen this before. Anna in a barrel is an NPC inventory item in the same way, but when dropped, she just resets to her position in the mine during the quest. Zanik is another one of these NPC inventory items, but cannot be dropped at all. So this monkey conversion is very much unique and deliberate. And if it's deliberate, it's had to be coded in. And if it's been coded in, how has it been coded in? When we follow this line of thinking, the question becomes this, does the code say, if the monkey is dropped, it becomes a level one monkey, or if the monkey is dropped in trouble brewing, it becomes a level one monkey. A surprisingly large amount of interactions like this are area restricted. So I suspected there was at least a decent chance that the code actually specified the latter. Okay, right, I've theorized this time that if I just try and drop the monkey straight from my invent, it should, keyword being should, should work for me. So let's run over here and see what happens. So, oh, I don't have a brewing guide. Let's grab myself a brewing guide. So we've got our interface stall. So hilarious that these spawn in here for literally no reason at all. Right. Uh, let's go over to the portal. Hit the portal, get ready to leave. Spam our guide. Okay, yeah, that worked as expected. Now let's see what happens when we try and drop the monkey. I'm hoping what will happen is it will just oh interesting okay i wasn't expecting that uh, i was expecting this chat box to appear at the bottom like like at the bottom whilst keeping that interface up that's very interesting so the book interface goes but the rest of the trouble brewing stuff stays so is it going to register as as inside or outside of trouble brewing here so let's release the monkey and see what happens oh 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 <laughs> oh, okay, that spawned, but that definitely said catch. That was not a level one monkey. That literally said catch on it. Oh my god. This might actually work. Right, let's give that another go, because I reckon that's going to work. Okay, let's give this one another go. So we just need to grab another monkey, and then we're going to run over to the portal and try and leave again. So we'll do a classic book spam, but this time we're going to try and drop the monkey and grab it as quickly as possible. I mean, surely that doesn't work, but maybe it will. Right. Uh, yes. Yes, honestly. Okay, right. We're outside. We've got our monkey. We can just drop it. Okay, where's this going to spawn? Because normally things like that spawn to the west and we're stood like right on the bank. Things. I reckon it'll probably go under us. Uh, right, let's give this a go. So we're going to drop and we're going to click. <gasps> right, that worked. Oh my god, it worked. We are categorically stood outside Trouble Brewing right now with a monkey. Oh my goodness. <laughs> As if that worked. As if that worked and we got it out. Does it work still like, as an item? Hey, monkey, can I come out of this bag now? Blah, blah, blah. That's just categorically in our invent. Oh, my God. It worked. We were able to stall and drop a monkey out of trouble brewing. Now, the important questions are these. Can it be transported? And can it be transferred to my chunk account? The likelihood of the latter was small, as I was not even sure it could be moved at all, never mind to an Iron Man account, but let's give it a go. Okay, so the big question now is, can we teleport with it? So, mostly harmless as an island, and not an island that we have access to on the chunk account, and crucially, within Trouble Brewing, we couldn't teleport, so hopefully, 
this monkey doesn't have any kind of anti-teleport properties attached to it. So let's see if we can. We can. Are we going to keep the monkey? Yeah. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Right, where can we... How do I get to Varrock? Uh... Okay, not going to... Oh, I'll just use this. Uh, teleport menu. Uh, where are we? Grand Exchange. Right. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, this is exciting. Right, we're just in Varrock now with this monkey. Oh my god. As if. As if. Oh, right. Can we, can we actually, can we drop this and pick this back up? Right, it's going to drop to the west or like under as I reckon. Oh, okay. Try it again. Okay, yeah, we can literally just reset that over and over and over again. That's so funny that that doesn't spawn as a level one outside. That's crazy. Oh my god. Right, let's uh, let's get the chunk account over here and see what we can do. Okay, so we are here with the. Uh, with the main account. The main account has the monkey on it. Uh, and what we're going to do now is see if this can get swapped over to Canifis Chunk. So, uh, surely not. It's an Iron Man. Like, there's no way. Right, let's stand under LSE. Let's uh, position our camera like this because it should generally spawn to the west or southwest. And then let's just try and drop this. Okay. Dropping on LSE. Oh my god. Oh my god. There's no fucking way that worked. Oh my god. There's literally... Oh my god. There is literally no world that when I started down this rabbit hole, I thought that this could actually be done. Oh my god. Okay, right. Let's go and see what kind of XP per hour we can get with this monkey then. Right. Let's go and fight. Oh my god. Can I do it again on this account? <gasps> oh my god. That actually works. That's mental. I tried a load of different spots with the monkey, but I kept losing it and having to get new ones. Essentially, it has a chance to spawn west, south, southwest or underneath you which made it a bit tricky to keep hold of considering you had one tick of clearance before it disappeared but finally i settled on a spot just north of the center of varrock okay i think i found the perfect spot and it is here in varrock and the reason for this is that basically it can spawn kind of south or west of you or southwest of you or under you and here, there's no option for it to spawn in south of me or southwest. It can only spawn along this line, either west, under, or east. Now, I've never seen it uh, spawn to the east. It's only ever spawned under or to the west. But that means that we can kind of rotate our camera to this sort of angle. And we should, in theory, never miss a click no matter where it spawns. So let's do a quick test and see what the XP per hour is like. Okay, so we're getting around 22k XP per hour. Doing Puro, I was getting 15 to 19k, so it's definitely an improvement, but it's not that crazy. Though, I guess I'm getting 22k XP per hour in agility as well, which is pretty mad. Oh my god, I, oh, I actually cannot believe that this worked. I actually cannot believe that this worked. If you like watching me push boundaries and break the game, then please like this video and subscribe to the channel to let me know that you want to see more of exactly this kind of content. So, we have a training method outside of Puro on the Extreme One Chunk Iron Man. Fantastic for me, but you may be wondering what is so game-breaking about this. It's only 22k per hour, right? Right. Which is pretty measly, considering I'm level 83 Hunter and 89 Agility. However, one detail that I've left out until this point is that you can do this from level 1. 
The success rate isn't 100% until you hit level 43 agility, but your hunter level has no bearing on the viability of this method, so you can start getting 22k XP per hour from level 1 on any account anywhere. Considering that the Canifis course is only 19k XP per hour, catching the monkey over and over is actually the best agility training method for all accounts until you hit level 50, even ignoring the passive hunter gains that you also get with the monkey. This method is cool, but for the majority of the game it's marginally better overall. It's nowhere near as game breaking as the bug that Josh discovered with Trawler, allowing him to get 500,000 fishing XP per hour. However, who it is game breaking for is area restricted accounts like Chunkmen and region locked accounts. Verf completed a grind recently where he hopped over stepping stones for 2.5k XP per hour in agility. If he'd known about monkey tech, he could have finished this grind nine times faster than he did. Chunk men are constantly getting brutalized by savage hunter and agility methods, but no more. They can bring a decent method to them. Now, having said all this, I myself am not going to overuse this method. I do want to experience the meme that is the Piero Piero grind to 89 Hunter, and I do want the loot from doing so. However, I would like to show the power of the monkey, and so I'll use it just to round off my agility from 89 to 90, and then I'll put it away for good. Despite the insane discovery, we do still have some chunk goals to go before we can roll another chunk. The last chunk that we rolled was the Grand Exchange. This fairly innocuous looking chunk landed me with a brutal list of chunk goals. 89 Hunter for a Lucky Impling, 95 Fletching so that we can fletch a Dragon Dart with the Dragon Dart tips that we can now get from Dragon Implings. 90 cooking so that we can create a part summer pie with the strawberries that we can now get from gourmet implings thankfully there's also a chef's delight on this drop table or this requirement would have been 95 also and a new one that has just been added 58 thieving recently it was discovered that the crumbling wall attached to rupert's house in grim tales does not actually require you to have started the quest entirely beforehand and due to us having unlocked the mind alter chunk a few episodes ago this task has been retroactively added to my list okay we've found our first dragon impling since being back at it i guess i'll just open it straight away and see if we can pull ourselves a glory or some dragon dart tips go on Ah, oh, three dragon defend, dragon daggers, P++. That's actually relatively interesting, though. One day they may be useful for me. One day. Many, many years from now, but one day. What? What? I just dismissed a frog random. Oh, my God. I, I just thought I could click any option and it would count. I'm so depressed right now. What? Who knew that was going to happen? That's so grim. That's literally an XP lamp I got rid of. Oh my god. Yes, there we go. We got another dragon. Right. Let's crack this baby open. Glories or preferably dragon dart tips. Let's go. Oh, baby dragon bones. It's not great because I do have an awful lot of prayer XP, but it's not the worst, I guess. Definitely not the worst. Come on, Dragon Impling, come on. Third one tonight. We're definitely getting quite a lot of them passively, which is nice. Come on, Dragon Impling. Come on, catch Dragon Impling. 65 XP. Let's open it up. Glories or Dragon Dart tips, please. Oh, yes! Amulets of Glory! There we go. Uncharged, the new best in slot amulet on the account. Kind of. Obviously, we've got the Amulet of Avarice, but it's basically unusable for us outside of the Revenants with a Magic Shortbow. So, having some Amulets of Glory, very, very cool indeed. Right, I am returning to the bank for the first time since I got these Glories. Let's chuck them in. Uh, where should I put them? Uh, let's put them up there instead of the gold bars. 
and I can grab one and I can put it on instead of my power army. Look, it matches my elegant perfectly. There we go. Glory acquired and equipped. Looks very nice. Very, very happy to have that. So over on Kick, we do a game where you can vote with subs to either stack or open the medium caskets. I've opened about 15 caskets and that I have stacked about nine caskets in the bank. This casket right here is the most expensive casket that we've had with 94 subs cast on whether to open it or close it. So we're talking $470 have been invested into this medium casket. It open has won with a vote of 52 to 42. Yoda here is the main propagator of team open. What are we going to get? Is the most expensive medium casket ever going to be the spiked manacles? Please say it is. 3, 2, 1. Let's go. Not even a collection log slot. Not even a collection log slot. 470 buckaroos well spent. No! <laughs> Total value. 4473 I think that might be like one of the lowest medium clue values you can actually get that's actually wild and it is that time of the day again we are opening yet another medium clue please be something better than the last one $470 for 4.4k was a bit brutal surely this one is going to be something better oh it's just not good. It's just not good. <laughs> at least I reimbursed my law runes for the, uh... At least I reimbursed my law runes that I spent on the clue. Wow. What is with these clues? Not even, not even any collection log slots lately. Grim. And there we go. We get another dragon impling. The only thing that we need now, extra. Oh, I had a 216 XP magpie. That's a good omen, I think. Right, let's get these dragon dart tips. Oh. <laughs> more amulets of glory i guess that is actually cool though did i say glory glory more amulets of glory though so i've got six of them which basically means i can lose them in the wilderness at like vetion or whatever so that's actually pretty cool okay another five step the third one that we've done without any plugins telling us where to go i'm definitely improving i feel like what i want to get after these five clues that i have to do with no guidance is just be happy doing them without guidance overall so Without much further ado, let's crack it open and see what we get. Oh my god, third clue in a row, no collection log slots, that's so bleak. And here we go, we got another dragon impling. Please give me the dragon dart tips. Fucking hell, dragon longsword again. <laughs> Literally, come on, give me some dragon dart tips. I deserve them after uh, not getting them at zombie pirates after like 14,000 kills or something ridiculous. And there is level 84 Hunter. Typically missed it, even though I clocked it about 170 XP away. But level 84, five levels to go. Catch rate goes up ever so slightly on the Eclectics, which should help with the XP per hour, even if it's only by about 1%. We're doing pretty well at the moment. Nothing we can do except just keep pushing on. Oh, I got it! <laughs> okay, there we go. Absolutely clapped that guy for the for the dragon impling. Go on, make my day now by it being dragon dart tips. No, <laughs> that's so sad. That's so sad. And I just missed it, but we just hit three million XP. I've also converted the XP tracker to be from level 33 which is what we started the chunk on to level 89 and for some reason it's kind of motivating me a bit because we're at 61.8 percent which is a very decent majority of the way there if i think about it like i'm 60 something percent of the way there and i'm 30 something percent of the way to go it actually sounds like i'm pretty close so uh oh this is a handy clip because it looks like we're going to be getting a dragon imp as well very nice, very nice indeed. Right, we'll just grab this baby for the XP. Grab the dragon after that. Come on, let's get the dragon dart tip on the clip about the 3 million XP. No, we're just going to miss it over and over. 
I guess we just we just miss five times in a row, six times in a row, and dragon dart tips. Oh no, baby dragon bones there. That's pretty good. Free prior XP. South of Slayer Tower, yes! We just got a second Canopus step. I think that's the first time I've been in Canopus and got a second Canopus step. That makes me so unbelievably happy. Oh my goodness. Go on, casket on the fourth step. That would just make me so unbelievably happy if I got the back-to-back -back steps. Straight into Spike Manacles as well, I reckon. No! No! Oh god, I've got to do a miserable step. Sad. So, I think they recently just updated this guy to appear here on these regular worlds because I've recently had my chunk map updated to say that I need to talk to this guy and it's some kind of, I need to talk to him about emblems and that will give me some kind of task. Yeah, there we go, medium task in the wilderness area. Your achievement diary has been updated. How weird is that? I think basically you used to only be able to do that in Edgeville and now you can do it in Varrock as well. There was only chance that I spotted him because I fancied a walk back to Soul Wars because I only just used the minigame teleport. That is bizarre. I wonder, I wonder if that got changed or Source just added it to the chunk picker recently. I'm not sure. Okay, so let's crack open this casket. Not had much luck in Varrox. Should we do a uh, on-the-move clue opening? Uh, as we cross the border, we'll open it and we're going to get something great. It's not something great, but it is four collection log slots, which is quite epic. Uh, I'll take four collection log slots in one clue. Uh, Penguin Mask is a rather kind of epic one, isn't it? Let's... Uh... Oh my god, that might be the single worst looking item ever, once the Saren put down in page 4 moves. <laughs> that looks so bad. Might go for the purple boater to, though, to match my uh, purple elegant. Game really wants me to look like a purpley boy. Okay, we've got another dragon impling, let's open it up, hope we can get the dragon dart tips. We're nearly 85 hunter, and so I'm getting slightly concerned that I may not get the passive dragon dart tips, and I have to actually have to go out of my way to get them. So, uh, let's crack this one open. Dragon bones regular. Decent, but I do have 12,000 of those in the bank already. <laughs> and with this lamp, we are getting 30... Three farming, which means we can grow bananas, which is a plant I will never grow, plant or harvest. So that's exciting. And with this eclectic right here, level 85 hunter. Absolutely no unlocks for us, but it does put us one level closer to level 89. Four levels to go. That With that level, that feels like I'm close now. I feel close now. So, um, yeah, hopefully I can just push up that XP per day for the next, uh, the next week or so and just knock out that level 89 and then we can finally move on to the other chunk goals. Right, here we go. Dragon Impling number one gazillion. Surely this one's going to be the Dragon Dart tips. <sighs> yeah, another magic seed. Come on. Oh, summer pies. Are they good for me? No, because I'm already 89 agility, and I need to make a summer pie, not just have a summer pie. Ah, oh, summer pie is cool though. 15 summer pies. They're actually good food. If I get a uh, chaos elemental at some point, they'd actually be quite handy. Well, there you go. So there's a perfect example of how you can just lose the monkey even like this. Because a random event just spawned behind me, so I instantly clicked that instead. At least we got a lamp out of it, though, I guess. So uh, we'll use that on farming. Cool. Right. Let's, uh, let's go. And that is level 86, Hunter. Just three levels to go now. Feels really close. It's currently Wednesday morning, and so we're doing a bit of the old Imp Defender tech. Because why not? And uh, hopefully, we can get a decent amount of XP today. It does seem like it's slightly more triggered than it was um, last week, which is when I made the, the video. It's obviously been a very popular video, so I can forgive it for being a little worse now. But we're still getting decent XP. It's definitely better than just uh, 
a standard bit of Piero or Monkey Tech. Look at that. Two Ninja Implings together. Go on, get the other one on first catch, and that'll just look really nice. Ah, oh, never lucky. 480 XP, though, very, very rapidly. Ah, oh, I love the double 240s. Come on. Go on, get this one next. Ah, oh, my dream is to get them back to back, like, just, like, actually catch them back to back. Ah, oh, we take the 240s anyway. We take those. There's a bot there. Don't let the bot get my ninja. Leave my ninja alone. <laughs> oh, thank God for that. So let's open up this medium clue in our new favorite place. Surely we get something good, right? Oh, oh, can I use those? Can I use those? No, nah, they, they surely gonna have a requirement on them, right? Nothing interesting happens. Ah, oh, that's so sad. Imagine if I could have used those. That could have been so good. Now, my thought is I reckon if I just, I just act like I don't really care what's in this clue. You know, I'm just walking along. Oh, there's a, there's a casket in my invent. I might open it. I might not. I reckon I'll probably get something good if I just act like I don't care. Okay, that didn't work. Ah! This isn't Pura Puro, and you're right, it's not. What we're testing right now is a cooking method. So the main cooking method we were doing was obviously Soul Wars, which kind of passively gets us some other skills, but I want to see how much XP per hour I can get totally uh, actively doing the Canifis Meat Shop. So what my thought is, is if I just burn the logs in the shop and buy the fish and burn on the and, and cook them on the fire, that hopefully eliminating the run time from shop to bank should hopefully result in some quite good XP per hour. It's going to be quite annoying doing like five fish at a time, but hopefully it's not too bad. But yeah, I'll get back to you with an XP per hour figure soon. Okay, so we're getting to the end of the, uh, of the first trip, and I would say pretty good. We've got 10,000 XP out of those six oak logs, which really isn't that bad. The money is not even a consideration. And we got 85k XP per hour. So what I just need to do now is grab an additional five or so oak logs and then run back to the shop and keep buying the fish. I reckon this is just around 80, 75 to 80k XP per hour. I would say pretty good. Right, so I've got an idea of how I'm going to get some more value out of my fires. So what I was doing was just like by getting up to a full invent and then hopping immediately, right? But the plan now, I think, is if I just drop all these, I've still got a fire in this world and there's still quite a lot of fish left in this world, right? So if I go like this and then recook again, that should basically mean that there's less time that I need to spend in each... Well, that didn't work very well. <laughs> Okay, so we have officially finished one hour of the Canifis Meat Shop cooking method 2.0, the post-shark nerf uh, version of the Canifis Shop. And I'll be honest, I'm pleasantly surprised by how much XP per hour it is. Over 75k XP per hour, relatively easily. It's one of the trickier training methods I've done because keeping track of the different amount of fish is hard. But... It's, uh, it's good XP per hour for what it is. I will say that. So, the other consideration for cooking is the method that I've been doing already, which is Soul Wars. So, I've got 2,950 zeal banked up at the moment, which is enough for nearly 100 crates. Per crate, it's apparently 2.8k cooking XP, which doesn't sound like a lot, but I do have 100 banked up, so I've got nearly 300,000 cooking XP in the Spores of War. But I guess what's good about the Spores of War is you also get a lot of other stuff, right? Uh, so you also get, is any of it in here? You also get the bolts that I need for fletching. You get a lot of runes, you get a lot of pure essence, you get a lot of mithril ore, you get a lot of coal, you get a lot of nature runes. There's a lot of good stuff from the Spores of War. So I'll probably just do a mix 
if anything, probably lean slightly heavily on the spores of war, but it is nice to know that if I get to the end of this chunk and the cooking is the last thing that I need, that there is a decent option to just brute force a lot of cooking XP per day, which is pretty cool. Okay, so the next training method that we are giving a go is the Ents. And we're giving the Ents a go because they give very good uh, woodcutting XP, essentially. Um, they're in the wilderness, which is a slight level of risk, but they're only level 7, so it's not too bad. But essentially, you just kill one and then chop it with the rune axe. I'm hoping that what this will get me is a lot of fletching XP compared to Vetion. I think Vetion was about 20,000-ish XP banked per hour, and I'm hoping this is going to be a lot more. So, since Source Chunk decided it would be really hilarious to update the thieving requirement of my chunks via an update that turned out that you could in fact climb over the agility shortcut up here if you had 58 thieving regardless of whether you'd done uh, whether you had the rest of the requirements to start grim tales or not we now need 58 thieving and 58 thieving doesn't sound too bad i'm level 40 so eh, i've already started it off but the xp per hour methods that i've got are really quite miserable uh so i'm going to test out the tea stall and see what the xp per hour is from that my bet is probably quite bad uh, and then i'm going to test out thieving these guards which i believe should be the best method uh it would be really handy if i had access to the master farmer uh, which is in this chunk, but sadly I do not. So it seems like we're going to be doing some rather useless thieving, but it'll be interesting to see what the XP per hour is. So let's get stuck in and find out. So we need to get to level 58, which is 224k XP, and it looks like the cups of tea are about 13k per hour, which isn't ideal, seeing as we're starting at 38k, so we need to get just less than 200k, so doing the tea cups, it's looking like this is going to be like a 15 to 16 hour grind, not really ideal. Uh, so we'll try out the guards next and see how they are, and I'm hoping they will be slightly better than this. Okay, so we're currently getting 28, 25, something like that KXP per hour at the guards. It's not great, and I'm dying quite, and I'm uh, getting hit quite a lot, which is just, in like, infuriating. I mean, as you can see, I've just failed, like, three times, and like, more than that in a row. Um, but even if we fail quite a lot, I think just the 47 XP per pickpocket, and you sometimes get a few in a row is just enough to make this way better than the T-Store. I mean, I'm only level 40, and the fail rate is going to go down, so I'll succeed more um, the higher level I get, and this is 28k. So uh, this is about twice as fast as the T-Store, if not better, and will improve as well, whereas the T-Store will stay the same. So we'll stick at this. With 30k XP per hour, it's not looking too bad, probably more like an 8-hour grind. Which isn't the worst, but it's annoying seeing as it's completely additional based on some bullshit discovery from someone uh, after having rolled the chunk. So uh, yeah, 58 thieving. Annoying. And there is our first thieving level, which you guys obviously cannot see. Level 41 thieving. Uh, Going to be a long and tedious grind. Not as long as most of the other grinds in this chunk, but... A tedious one but yeah i'll be back with some more thieving levels hopefully soon and we just got 42 thieving which is also 1400 total which seems like a good thing except the fact that that then puts us 100 levels away from last man standing we won't be getting last man standing in this chunk but it's relatively likely we get it in a future one that has any significant total levels to be gained you know Construction, rune crafting, herb lore, mining, smithing, fishing, farming, anything like that is likely to trigger some kind of uh, last man standing grind. Oh my god, I've been dropping these trout the whole time. No! How, many, how much food have I just dropped? <laughs> I had them set to left click from the... From the, uh, from the cooking. <laughs> I just dropped a whole inventory of trout. That was so funny. 
<laughs> oh, I'm so washed. Puro has literally broken my brain. And with this lamp right here, we are getting level 34 farming, which unlocks absolutely nothing of use for us. But we are definitely making re rapid, rapid progress now since the uh, update to the random events so that you get basically way more lamps. It is Wednesday morning again, and we are in the Puro wheat fields, running around with Impling Defenders for the express purpose of catching our own Implings and getting level 87 Hunter. Just two levels to go until we can finally leave this place forever. Please, I literally, I, I, I'm so done with this, right? But look how fun this is. This is so much more fun than the regular method. That 22k on screen is not the actual XP I'm getting. I was doing regular hunting before. But yeah, we're, uh, we're back in the fields having a good time. No, I hate when that happens. That's the most annoying thing that happens when you go through the hedge and like auto trigger them like that. That's so annoying. Oh, that was very nice. The immediate catch as soon as I caught the third impling. That was very juicy. And here is our second Dr. Jekyll whilst I've actually had a Torstal in the invent. Here you are, and there is our next stamina potion. That means we've got two full four-dose stamina potions in the bank. Very nice indeed. So, we are in our new Elder Chaos Druid outfit, which I am enjoying quite a lot. And we have another clue ready to open. Surely we're going to get something good this time. I feel like the last ones have just been a selection of not even collection log slots. So, I'll be happy with a collection log slot. A wearable collection log slot. Let's go. Ah, oh, Purple Sweets, and I would have got a Master Clue Scroll. Purple Sweets and Red Firelighters might be possibly the most boring collection log slots. I guess Purple Sweets technically could be useful for me, maybe in future. Something like a Fight Caves run or Chambers of Zarek or something, but yeah, I think <laughs> quite an L of a casket, to be honest. Oh, yes! Another Dr. Jekyll! And another stamina potion. We're up to three now. Very, very elite. So uh, what, we need seven more, and then in theory we could, if we unlock construction, get like the stamina pool in our house, and that would be fucking sick. So it is that time of day where we open another clue casket. Surely this one is going to be something exciting. Uh, just the, the last ones have all been pretty miserable. I think we're due something exciting, right? Pure depression. <laughs> Pure depression casket yet again. Bleak. Right, we've got another dragon imp. We're hoping that we can wrap up these uh, dragon dart tips before we get to level 89. We're 41% of the way to level 88, so I would say not guaranteed... And still not got them, but six Snapdragon Seeds is pretty cool regardless. I literally don't know what item this is. How is he throwing stuff at me that I'm putting my shield up for? I'm literally baffled. He's got, he's got a fucking dual disc! What the fuck is that? Okay, another dragon, just fire- oh. Oh no. Another dragon, I was about to say, fire, about five minutes after the last one. Surely this one's the dart tips. Surely. Surely this is the dart tips. <gasps> oh, no! <laughs> I thought that was it for a second. No! As if it's the dragon darts, not the dart tips. I actually got excited. Oh, no. That is so annoying. Oh, that's very upsetting. Very upsetting. Oh my god, second time in about four hours that we've had a Dr. Jekyll. All I'm getting at a minute is Dr. Jekylls, and there is our fourth stamina potion. That's three in less than 24 hours. That is so good. Drowning in them, six to go. Okay, this, this one's going to be the one. This one is going to be the one. 
Oh, dragon arrows. Can we get? Can we not get every single dragon projectile except the dragon dart tips, please? Ah, <laughs> oh, there was just dragon stones. <laughs> sad, sad. Okay, so they updated Trouble Brewing yesterday because people were doing some kind of boosting with the rum to get inflated rates, but I'm unsure whether this is going to have any impact on my monkey tech. So let's quickly find this out. Uh, okay, looks like we're okay. Looks like we're all right still. Okay, monkey tech still works. <laughs> Cannot patch two things at once. So a small little bit of fun tech with these uh, monkeys is that you can actually get more than one. So uh, even if you lose one, you can keep going. So as we can see here, I now just have two in my invent. So I'm like double protected from losing them because you do lose them from time to time. But now I won't. Uh, I feel like there must be some kind of tech that I can't quite figure out to like drop two at once somehow but i don't know how you'd pick them back up because you've only got one tick of clearance to pick it back up again but yeah if you really wanted and you wanted to do this for a long period of time or you had a particularly low level account you could just prep like 28 of these monkeys ready to go in your invent and then it wouldn't be so painful to get them back uh but yeah <laughs> additional tech so I'm up to 5,300 zeal tokens. I really wanted to get to 6,000 and uh, do like an opening of 200 caskets, but I am basically out. Well, I'm not basically out. I am out of runite bolts and addy bolts. And I want to keep adding the, uh, the bolt tips to them because I do have an awful lot of ruby and diamond and dragon stone. I mean, bolt tips are crazy, like 10,000 of those. So I want to add some more of those to my collection. So we're just going to crack into some Star Wars crates. Now, I'm also looking to get a lot of raw fish because that would help massively with the cooking. And I can also see how much cooking I need to go. I may make this my last bout of Soul Wars, at least in this chunk. Soul Wars is going to be very useful for me overall. But in this chunk, I think this might be it because my other cooking and... Uh, Fletching methods are far better in terms of like just straight up XP per hour. And I really want to knock this chunk out ASAP. So this is probably going to be the last Star Wars buying session. Uh, what I'm going to do this time is buy like all the crates, chuck them in the bank and then get them out of the bank. So uh, yeah, I'll be back once I've got all the crates. Thank. Okay, so our zeal was enough to get us 178 chests. I'm probably going to unlock that 10 at a time, I think, and just see how we get on. Hopefully, we do far better on our uh, raw fish than we did last time. Uh, some mythor would be nice as well, but see how we get on. Oh, those are the ones that we love to see. 109 rune bolts and over 100 sharks in one crate. That is a thing of beauty. Straight into the swordfish and then a bit more pure essence. Very nice. Two cabbages in one invent. Are you joking? <laughs> Rip. Okay, so we are down to the last of the crates. Can we get the dupe pet in the final crates? That would be appreciated. Other than that, more crates like that, please. Just straight up raw fish only would be very handy. Doesn't look like we're going to get the dupe pet. No, we are not. But we did get a lot of stuff. So, obviously, you can see some of the Soul Wars loot here. But the main Soul Wars loot they're interested in is this stuff in our invent. And we got, actually, I think that looks a lot better than the last opening in terms of getting the stuff that I want. But we will... S oh. <laughs> oh, when did I get that? <laughs> I didn't even see that happen. <laughs> I'm live on kick right now, and it was uh, just told to me in chat that I got, that I did actually get one. How did I miss that? <laughs> okay, well, we did get a dupe pet, uh, but we also got loads of this stuff that we actually do want, which is bolts, roars, myth or pure essence, and nature runes. Now, 
Probably the best is the raw fish. And what I'm going to do now is run some checks and see how much cooking XP I've got banked. Because if we add all this stuff to the bank, uh, we hit half a million pure essence, which is pretty cool. Uh, and our fish stacks actually start to look very impressive. I mean, that's the best part of 10,000 fish right there, which is pretty cool. Definitely over 1 million XP, but it's time to see what level we would get to if we... So I've just checked the banked XP plugin and we have 4.77 mil banked total, right? So that gets us to level 88 uh, and about 550k shy of level 90, which is fine because we've got a method now that's 80k XP per hour. So we'd only need to do that for seven hours and we'd have level 90. So we're basically seven hours and a load of AFK cooking away from level 90, which is pretty cool. Uh, and in terms of the fletching, what do we have? So we've got really not a lot of XP at all. We've got, well, mm, we've got all of these and the dragonstone bolts and the other bolt. Ah, uh, we probably do. We've probably got somewhere around 150k in fletching supplies there. Uh, so that'll get us down to like less than a quarter of a mil to go until 95 fletching. So not very far off on that either, uh, which is pretty good. So I think what I'm actually going to do now, though, is go and do some thieving. And there is level 45 thieving. I can now pickpocket from a whole load of extra sources. Alas, nothing that's actually useful for me. Getting 23.2k XP per hour, which isn't too bad at level 45, but it is kind of bad for thieving. And thieving is quite a frustrating skill when you're just failing over and over and over again and getting no rewards that are worth anything. But... Uh, at least I only need to get to level 58. Imagine if I had to do this to like level 85 or something. That would be pain. So finally, after quite a long time, I am cooking the fish that I get from Star Wars. It's only going to get us to level 88, but I may as well just do, do a little bit of cooking. Why not? Um, and we're getting 150k XP per hour just cooking the lobsters. I'm not burning any either, which is pretty nice. I will burn some of the sharks, I think, because I don't have cooking gauntlets. But I think I should be alright on the lobsters and swordfish not to burn any. And it is very, very nice getting uh, over 100,000 KXP per hour in anything <laughs> for any period of time. Because uh, normally I'm more focused on like 20 KXP per hour. So 150, pretty nice. Okay, so I thought of an improved method, which was just to cook at the Grand Exchange, seeing as you can set a fire literally right next to the bank. When we've brought our XP per hour up to 165k instead of 140k. So, what? Well, that's like a 15, 20% improvement, which is pretty good. Uh, and we're not cook we're not failing lobsters anyway. And at level 86, I won't fail swordfish on a fire either. So, yeah, definitely worth doing. And also, I've been informed that if you uh, just keep adding logs to one of these foresters' campfires, they never go out. So, we can essentially just have a permanent cooking spot next to us if we so want. Uh, I'm probably going to use my ult or something to kind of keep the fire going consistently, but pretty good as is. Pretty good. So, we are about to get our first of a of a few cooking levels uh level 86 cooking no unlocks according to the in-game guide but at level 86 you do unlock 100 percent cook rate on raw swordfish on a fire so do actually get something for that because we do have like 3,000 swordfish in the bank which is like what 420k xp so that is not too bad uh, we'll get 87 pretty easily off just the lobsters and the swordfish and then hopefully we don't burn many of our and here is 87 cooking coming in on the swordfish. Nothing gained for that, but just three levels to go until level 90. And that is the level that we need to finish the chunk. So we are getting through it very rapidly now. Hello. Got a PK on us, boys. Should be alright to get underneath him. Oh, okay, we're good. He's one two six combat, so he can't uh can't get on me. Woohoo! That wouldn't have been fun. 
<laughs> oh, stress. The stress. He's fucking. Oh, he's like actually stream sniping for me. Oh. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> now, the game is about to be updated, and it is quite hilarious because they fixed impling trading. Not necessarily the trading where I can release them and catch them myself, but rather the lucky impling trading that I did in the last video. The update reads, fixed a bug where live implings could be indirectly traded via imp defenders release. So that method no longer works. So that is quite cool. I think it's quite cool to literally personally have a, you know, genuine impact on the games. A Jmod has had to go out of their way to update some code because of something I did. That's pretty cool. Um, based on the subject matter of this video, and what I'm doing at the moment, potentially that's going to happen again in, uh, in a couple of weeks. But, uh, yeah, be cool, I think. And, uh, yeah, you've got three minutes left to uh, abuse imp defenders to trade lucky implings. Not that any of them work, of course. For fuck's sake. Fucking evil Bob. <laughs> oh, did you see that shit? Oh, that's painful. It has been a long time coming, but finally we are getting level, I believe this one, 88 Hunter. Just one Hunter level to go until we have completed by far the hardest grind of this chunk. Through over 300 hours it has taken to get this level. 456k to go, that is about... 20 hours by the Puro or Monkeys. Wow. <laughs> it's been a long time coming and it feels very, very good to be on the final stretch. I say that. I hate how he how my character doesn't like turn around and pick the monkey up. He's just like staring right into my eyes the entire time. <laughs> Straight in the eyes. Quite creepy actually. And here we are, about to get one of the more interesting passive levels that I've ever got. Level 90 Agility, which is pretty mad. We got the entirety of level 89 to level 90 from our little pal the monkey here, which is quite insane, isn't it? Uh, I think that's probably where I'm going to leave the monkey tech. I didn't want to really use it to just skip Puro Puro. Um, I more so used it to, like, just as a sort of demonstration of how cool and powerful it could be. So I'll probably go back to Puro Puro to finish off the rest of it. But, yeah, level 90 agility. That is pretty nuts. I don't think we will ever have to do agility on this account again. Well, I guess until we uh, get to Brimhaven and need to get 99. But, level 90 agility. Nice. So, I just did a 10 minute test of seeing how much food I could buy and bank from the Canafish shop in that time. Like, as in how much banked cooking XP I could bank in that time. In 10 minutes, I managed to bank 36,000 XP's worth of food. Which is fucking mental! You know, that's 216,000 XP per hour's worth of food. That's mad. So what I'm going to do now is separate my cooking and my buying. Because what I was doing before is the method you saw was I was buying in the shop and cooking in the shop using logs on this account, right? And I just think that's actually quite rubbish. <laughs> um, like, it might be ever so slightly more efficient than, you know, doing this, buying it and then cooking it separately. But I just don't... I think this is better because this... This feels better, never mind the AFK cooking that I'm going to get to do when I finally have banked all the fish that I need. So yeah, I'm just going to uh, stick with this for now, because now that I've got the Grand Exchange, I can just sit at the Grand Exchange and like, you know, not have to move <laughs> and cook all my food. 
So I'm going to cook everything that I have in the bank. Uh, uh, you know, I eat like lobsters, trout and salmon and pike and swordfish and tuna, and all that kind of stuff at the G on fires because I won't burn any of them. And then for the last bit of XP, I'm going to do the shark on a range of Port Now, I, I'm i kind of half and half on that, but I do think it's probably worth it because even, I think it's going to be about break-even XP, taking into account the, uh, the decreased burn percentage uh, when on a range, but I'm having to run more. Uh, but also, I would just quite like to actually keep the sharks like, they're actually just useful. So I think keeping those for the future will be good because although I've got quite a lot of good food in my bank now, that necessarily won't always be the case. So I think stacking up as much really solid food as I can, i.e. You know, the sharks, the dark crabs, all the blighted food I've got, is probably just a good idea. So I'm going to do as much of that as I can, but yeah... Just did this clip to show this method is fucking mental. And I'm not at all sad that I lost access to uh, the shark alt abuse thing that I did before to get loads of sharks. Because clearly just buying loads of trout and all that is pretty good too. Okay, so with this invent in the bank, this is level 90 and a bit banked. So essentially what I believe this is in banked XP is level 90 plus about 60 or 70k XP. The 60 or 70k XP is to account for the sharks that I might burn, but hopefully I won't burn too many and we'll be able to uh, cook this stuff up, no problem, and finish level 90. So that is level 90 cooking banked and it will not take too long to knock out probably 10 hours of like very very afk maybe even less so yeah that's a good one to get banked and now we're gonna go do some hunter so i've just finished up a trip of ents and i believe with this uh set of logs in my invent i should have level 90 fletching bank so let's just check that yes we do perfect so now all i need to do is finish chopping the logs and look we're only 75k away this has been a long time coming after we failed <laughs> to get it in the zombie pirates chunk whilst uh, the larens keys were still available this one has felt a long way away like it hasn't it's felt close but it's felt elusive um so it's going to be very very nice to finally get it so i have heard rumor that the poll results are out for that rathmore poll so let's go to the poll booth and have a little look uh summer summit mega poll important one is if rathmore got approved no it didn't no no oh that's so bad because that means that well, that's done then, because that because the Revenant emblem trade in for Ether Shop was as part of Rathmore. No, no. Oh, that's such a massive rip. Oh, that's so annoying. That means the emblem shop's dead, and my hundreds of millions of GP of Ether of uh, emblems cannot be turned in for Ether. Ah oh, no. Hopefully I ho hopefully they repoll that, because that change is nothing to do with Rathmore, really. Hopefully they uh they change. And there is level 50 thieving. Just eight levels to go. Cheeky little milestone. <sighs> Not much to say about it really, is it? They're quite pathetic levels. I'm used to getting like 80s. 90s and collection log slots and now we're just getting 50 thieving it's a bit of a step down but there it is now it feels like this requirement has been a requirement since forever seeing as it was a requirement in our last main chunk there is 95 fletching one of the big three requirements from this chunk knocked out you can now make dragon darts well i actually can't because i don't have any dragon dart tips but we will get some of those and then we'll be done with it but that is basically the last fletching grind we're ever going to need yeah the only requirement uh higher than that is the uh 
is the cape, which for some reason I can't find on this. But uh, yeah, we likely won't ever need to get that because getting over to Catherby is quite the way away. Uh, but yeah, there is 95 Fletching knocked out. Basically only the Hunter, the Cooking, and the Thieving. And there is 53 heaving, heaving, thieving. You now pack pocket from Desert Bandits. And I believe that's also the level that you need for Desert Treasure. Yet another quest I'm never going to be able to do. Ah, oh, the spider is still marked. Ah, oh, good times, good times. Ah, oh, that's, that's like a real throwback. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Nice. That was a long time ago. My stats were nowhere near that good when that spider was relevant. Now, if you guys want to see some pretty cool tech for something that you can do um, with cooking, uh, which quite a lot of people probably don't know that are watching this video, is if you run up to the range and then drop all the sharks, which, only, which doesn't take that long, probably takes, like, with good dropping, probably only takes a few seconds. That was pretty bad. Uh, and you can then two-tick your sharks like this, which is significantly quicker than uh, just cooking them on auto. Uh, this is a pretty cool method, which is very useful, particularly if you have access to the range in the myth skilled because you're right because it's a range rather than a fire this doesn't work on fires it only works on ranges because you cannot one tick a fire like this although to be fair you could probably use the shark but you just have to be a lot quicker but this is definitely the quickest way to uh, cook sharks there you go there's a little demonstration of okay we've got a biggie coming in right here Level, drumroll please, I thought I'd get it sooner than this, level 90 cooking, there we go, one of the main chunk goals wrapped up and done, and we also hit 1425 total, just 75 levels to go until our nightmare zone requirement. 90 cooking. We can actually make that part summer pie. That's crazy. Oh, right. Can I actually do that? Right. Strawberries. Yeah, we've got those. Pie. I think you just need a pie dish, do you? Right. Let's remove one of these. Grab my chef's delight. Uh, drink this and use that. Oh, God. Now I've messed it up. <laughs> I messed it up. No. Oh, no. Right. Okay. I'll be back shortly with it hopefully being done. Oh. <laughs> okay. Turns out you need a pot of flour to make it into a pie shell with pastry dough. And I don't have any method to get a pot of flour other than, as far as I can tell, Killing imps for a 1 in 64, so <laughs> I might put that one off for a bit, but I am going to have to do that before I finish the chunk. Oh, that's so infuriating. And with that pickpocket, we are also hitting 58 thieving, which nothing comes up for, but is an important level for us because that is the chunk goal. And this one, this one, I'm pretty sure I can do because there's no one in 64 items to do this one. What I need to do is head over to Clan Wars, head over to Ice Mountain and climb up a crumbling wall. So give me but one moment. Okay, here is the crumbling wall that you need 58 thieving to climb over. And I can climb over it. Thank goodness for that. I hadn't checked because it's so kind of out of my way being over here. And I was slightly <laughs> stressed that I'd click on it and it would go, you need to have started Grim Tales to climb over this wall, you fucking buffoon. But luckily, <laughs> luckily, I didn't. So that is one chunk goal officially ticked off. And now we need to do is get 89 Hunter and get the dragon dart tips to create the dragon dart and get ourselves a pot of flour and some water so that we can make our part summer pie and then then we're done
And that's about that for this episode. What you will be seeing as the next thing on YouTube is going to be a chunk rolling stream. Now, obviously, I didn't finish the tasks. Uh, I did do the 90 cooking, the 95 fletching, and the 58 thieving. We still have the 89 hunter to go, but we're only 120k XP away, so that is no big deal at all. Uh, so we will have all of that done by Saturday, the 21st of September. That is when the Chunk Rolling stream is going to be, and it is also going to be leading straight into a subathon in the new Chunk. And the subathon will be taking place for at least 24 hours live at kick.com forward slash freyrs immediately after the chunk rolling stream so yeah i would say successful episode obviously monkey tech is the most important thing that we found absolutely crazy like so crazy i mean there's a lot of chunk men on youtube but there are a lot of chunk men off youtube as well probably outnumber the ones on by about five times so hopefully this can uh this can help both of them uh get those kind of hunter those initial hunter and agility levels that they may be struggling with or paper over the cracks of some terrible methods that they uh that they're currently doing but thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It would mean the world to me. Bye-bye.